channel, everybody. <laughs> Infamous exposed. Hello. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Infamous Exposed with Dante Dan. Today, we're just going a bit raw, a bit personal, really. Would you say personal? <laughs> no. We are here to talk all things spiritual, astrological. No. <laughs> astrological. Astrology. Astrology. But also just chat. Just chatting. We're literally just chatting today. We <laughs> might not even discuss anything that I just said. But we are going to get personal because we've noticed that we haven't posted in a while. It's because we're going through a bit of a... A funk, we like to call it. A little bit of a rut. We have been stuck in this rut ever since Mercury was in the microwave, which ends soon. Mm -hmm. As soon as it started. I, I blame everything on the planets. And I was literally like, you can't blame everything on the planets. I said, well, no, there's an energy shift and I feel depressed. Yeah. So, like, we're not usually like this. I'm not. I know that, aren't they? I'm not usually like this. I've gotten so much better at handling my emotions, but definitely the past, like, few weeks started to go downhill a bit, and then I think we just fed off of each other's energy. Yeah. And got sad. really sad, and, you know, amongst other things, like, that There's happened in so our much lives. Happening at the moment. So, yeah, we just fed off each other and started to get really sad. And we couldn't get out of it. We were just like, why can't we just be happy? We just wanted yeah. to be happy and carefree and just, and we couldn't get out of it. And it was like, I had so much anxiety. Yeah, yeah. and so did I, which I never get. And I'm very, like, what would you call me? Just like free spirited. Impulsive. What? Impulsive. Free spirited, <laughs> impulsive, uh, a fun person. And honestly, <laughs> Nothing was fun. <laughs> she was not fun to hang around. <laughs> and neither was I. Like, we were just yeah. really not happy. Yeah. And I think it's... I think, okay, one, it was the planets. Two, two this town. No, I love this town. And so you don't do like this. No, you don't. But it's got this weird... I don't know. Like, today we went to Tybee Island, which is where, if you've seen the last song filmed... The last song with Miley Cyrus, that was filmed there. And as soon as I got there today, it's like a whole weight lifted off my whole body. Because you were at the beach. Yeah, and I was at the beach. And I know that that has been my problem as well as maybe the planets. But because I've been in this town that's ghetto, spooky, a bit eerie, you know. No, it's just not your vibe and that's okay. Yeah, I still think it's beautiful. But, you know, as soon as I went to the beach today. I was a new person. I was literally sitting there watching dolphins and seeing like at least 30 different dolphins today. Also, the reason why I think I had a lot of anxiety anyway was I was like, it was a lead up to my period as well. Yeah. And same with you. Yeah. And a lot of anxiety around our periods. Yeah. And our bodies and everything just felt off. And weird. Yeah. And so we were in this funk for, I'd say, a good week or two. Yeah. And if one of us was happy, the other wasn't. And then vice versa. And okay. then if we were both, it was just not good. So today we're here to talk about how to get out of a little funk because for someone that has never been in one before. <laughs> she didn't know what hit her. I get in funks like that all the time. And I, I blame it on the planet. So then I know that the feeling is going to go away. Like I knew very well in the moment whenever I had the anxiety or whatever, I was just like, it's going to go away. I just got to kind of try to think positively. Yes. But it was very hard. Yeah. And I didn't think it was ever going to leave me. I was like, oh my God, I was trying to do things that, you know, I see on Instagram, like you're scrolling and it's like things to make you happy, read a book, drink tea, go for a walk. Yeah. What other self-care stuff? Mm. Anyways, every self-care thing didn't work. Listen to good music. No, nothing helped. I was literally like, ah. But then we decided 
Um, you can thank me, actually. Yeah. I really have always wanted to go to, like, a yoga meditation, like, yin and restore. And we decided to book in one and mm-hmm. on a Tuesday night here in Savannah. And we went and we were mm-hmm. still very sad when we walked into this class. <laughs> But we Moping left, around. literally, we left this hour class just like brand new women. It was so crazy. So during it, I thought it was going to be yoga, which it wasn't really. It was literally just meditation. And for a whole hour, you just laid down and they just pretty much guided you through a meditation. Kind of like a little bit of yoga, but not really. Yeah. And we walked out. It was like we were on drugs. Like, like- we were like we were on a high we We were on the biggest high we were so happy and at the beginning which is crazy I you have to set an intention and I said I want to walk out of this room happy carefree carefree or something else like positive and positive and like you just say that in your head you know and then we get in the car and I was like to Dante yeah so my intention intention was to walk out happy, carefree, and positive. And she was like, no way. I was like, I literally said it exactly like that. I was like, I will be, like, after this class, I'll be happy, carefree, positive. And we literally both stepped out of that building completely different, like, new outlook on life, (laughs) which how does, you know, this whole rut I was in for that whole week, nothing fixed me. And then I did that class. I just didn't feel like we were ever going to, like, get out of it yeah and we literally we got in the car and we were just screaming like we had music blasting like I windows was beeping and the horn. he was beeping the horn and we were just really happy we got dinner afterwards we got salad bowls up. well actually we walked out saying we turned vegan become yogi she said that she was gonna turn vegan and i was like mm. and then i ordered chicken <laughs> so it didn't work and like cheese and all that but yeah, so then we got salad bowls, and then we were like, we're going to meditate three week, three mornings we're a week. We're going to meditate <laughs> three days a week. I'm going to stay over. We're going to wake up at 6 a.m., meditate for an hour, go for a walk in the park, read our tarot. Has that happened once? Well, Dante has stayed over saying that we're going to meditate in the morning, which it happened one morning, but it was like, 9 30 9 10 and o'clock. we didn't even get out of bed we're like let's lay in bed and meditate and so, then em said that she didn't even like fully meditate you just laid there and thought about stuff yeah <laughs> which i was thinking yeah that then again i woke up not happy that day <laughs> but it, that it's like little things okay things kept piling up in my life that have never gone bad before and it just kept piling and piling and so you didn't I, know how to deal with it. Yeah, I didn't know how to deal with it. You still don't know how to deal with it. Still don't know how to deal with it. So if you guys but have any tips. Meditation messages. helped a lot. Yeah, that meditation. Class was like a turning point for us to see like more positive outlook. And it just changed something. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. It just literally changed. Yeah. Like exactly. It just got us out of that rut. Yes. Which then again, we went last night. And I think it's just also going to that. Yeah, because it's like, I can't sit in my place and meditate for an hour. Like I have yeah. to go somewhere, and it's sitting in yeah in the environment surrounded yeah. by other people who are it's there really for the chill. same thing. It's yeah. candle lit. It's just it's beautiful. Yeah, so everyone definitely go and do that, even if you think that you can't do meditation because you know you just have lots of energy. Like M. Like me, I have so much energy. But it helped. It really does help. And, yeah, we can thank the meditation for getting us out of our rut. But there's also other things that I like to do to calm me down, um, which is going for runs and swimming laps and exercising. <laughs> but, no, I was going to speak about, you know, doing things like tarot's. Mm-hmm. I get a thing called an absent healing, which I got one last night. Pretty much she tunes into your energy by you sending her like a selfie. Mm -hmm. And then she pretty much just, what would you call it? She's kind of like a medium, but 
kind of works with like the spirit guides and that type of stuff and just tunes in energetically to like your energy and she just like kind of um like writes down everything that comes to her and kind of shows you like guidance around certain situations and it's just like a nice way to give you more like clarity on how you're feeling in the in the certain moment and um our lady like who we go to to get these readings is just Amazing. amazing and it's always really nice to just have that like better understanding of whatever you're feeling pretty much yeah and mine was mine have always been really spot on and the one I got yesterday it was it was there was parts of it that I like resonated with straight away um but I always say this and I said this to em, I said like with her readings I find some parts I will like fully resonate with and then other parts I don't and I'll read them maybe like a few months later or even a few weeks later and I'll be like okay well that makes sense now it's almost like she's like a psychic as well yeah. like she can predict stuff that hasn't even happened yet or feelings that you feel that you're like well, that doesn't really make sense right now but yeah then in a few months it's like oh that yeah Actually, that makes sense yeah my last one or one that I got last year She doesn't know my life at all, but she said a lot about traveling and saying how my family and my friends felt sad that I was leaving. Do you remember that? Like Mm -hmm. sad that I was leaving, that I'll always be like close to them and that just because I'm leaving them doesn't mean that I'm going forever. And she brought up a lot about travel and she often brings up a lot about my career. And yeah, this one also she brought up, about freedom and had like a metaphor of like a horse but this like with my heel like with the readings that I get it's interesting because I know how I feel like deep down about something or about how I feel about myself and I know no one else knows that like I know no one else knows my thoughts on certain stuff and when she says specific things it's kind of just like I know that you're tuning into my energy correctly and I know that like you're not bullshitting me because yeah. like I feel that on a deep level like no one else knows that yes. about myself. Yeah, there was there's stuff that she brings up that absolutely no one like knows. And there's things that I've never told anybody or no one would know, like no one would have any idea and she's like brought it up and I'm like, okay, if you can tell me that, that's legit. Hmm. I find a lot of like for like self care, my stuff is very I don't know, see again, I'm blaming the planets. I don't know if it's because I'm an Aquarius and we're very like intellectual and we like really learning things, but I will literally set out all of my journals in a day and all the books and things that I'm trying to like learn from. And that's like so calming to me. Just like learning new things, self help books, not necessarily, but like astrology books and yeah. like all that type of stuff is really calming and that kind of gets me like uh, more grounded and makes me feel a lot better. And yeah, absent healing readings, yeah. like talking to people, even it doesn't have to be even a psychic <laughs> or yeah. like a medium, like it could just be talking to someone, just talking to you about my feelings yeah. and talking to each other about how we feel is yeah. very good. Yeah, I agree. And even just going on your own for a walk, or a run. I like to run or swim laps. But doing that, it makes you, I don't know, be really grateful for your life and the, the like the most simplest things. Well, yeah, when it was I a guess. few weeks ago, we were walking. We went and got like ice cream down in oh, yeah, downtown. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of like a spontaneous thing. Well, let's just stop and get some ice cream. And we walked and we were just eating ice cream walking down the street. And it was just mm. like, I don't know. Me was one of those moments I even said like wow we're in uh, like Savannah like we're in Georgia eating ice yeah. cream walking down the street like we're so fucking lucky yeah and it's just like those little moments that you have to just take into account and be so present in and even just this afternoon like we were on this boat in yeah. Tybee yeah. Island like Adam Sandler has a house there yeah so does Miley Cyrus apparently 
and we were just on this boat and we saw dolphins and we were just sitting at the front of this boat and just it was so peaceful and it was just like one of those moments that you just had to relish in because yeah 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 and we were saying how like we didn't feel the need to talk to anyone or even each other like we're just we were just kind of just sitting there just like enjoying the surroundings and everything about it there was dolphins there was birds it was there was music playing like it was stunning it was really nice and that makes us realize how lucky we are and that we're on the right path also really random but every time i see 333 which i see every day that to me it's like a good sign i'm like okay definitely on the right synchronicities synchronicities yeah which i know everyone everyone's always like you just obviously look at your phone at 3.33 and I'm like, no, it just, like, like sometimes yeah. it's actually on the way to Georgia in the car. I remember I seen it five times that day and yeah. it wasn't even on a clock. It was like on trucks, number plates, yeah, everything, buildings. It was so crazy. And actually the last healing reading that I got from um, Our Lady, she sent it at 4.44 a.m. Really? But she didn't know that that was my birth time. Really? The most of our time here in Savannah, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And we've gone down to River Street and we found the place that we love to go. And that is Saddlebags. I was just going to say we <laughs> should talk about Saddlebags. Saddlebags is like a line dancing, like bar, pub. Yeah. Like dance floor. In Like it's a club, but it's like for okay. line dancing. No, I'll set the scene. Yeah. It is the hoedown down scene in Hannah Montana. Hold down. Yeah. It's like yeah, oh, a man. barn sort of pub. Like it's a pub that's set as like a barn. Would oh, you say? It's got a fucking bull in it. It's got a dance floor. <laughs> it's got a bar. And it's just like Western. Like it's like. Yeah, Western. Not yeah. really a barn. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Didn't have hay in it. <laughs> and animals. Giant. It had a fake bull. <laughs> But it was, it's a really fun place. I don't know. We haven't found anywhere else that's, like, fun like that. Yeah. Like, no club, There's at least. There's not really clubs here, actually. But, yeah. <gasps> it's crazy because they all do the exact same dances, all the people. Like, they just there. know what to do. and Everyone just follows along. It's It's really great fun. Like, the more, well, the more I drank, the better I got at it. So, (laughs) and it was, they're really accommodating. Like if you obviously don't know what you're doing, like they'll start to show you how to do it. Yeah, this guy came up and he was like, y'all new here. (laughs) I've been coming here for two weeks. Let me show you. And then he like fully taught us. Like this one sequence to like the dance and stuff. Yeah, which was pretty great. And I think also as dancers, we picked it up really fast. And hopefully by tomorrow night, whenever we go back, We're even better. We're better than all the regulars. Cute how they all wear boots and denim shorts shorts with, like, flannels hanging out their back pockets. It's so cute. Like, it's just a real, like... It's a vibe. It is a vibe. It's southern vibe. It's a southern vibe. You can tell the ones that go there for the line dancing and ones that are just have no idea what they just walked into or like tourists yeah like some girls walked in like tight mini dress heels and they were all like pop off <laughs> like they were like yeah. doing like they were like, girls. They were, like <laughs> and it was just they didn't know what they do and then they left because yeah, they were like they, soon left. they left it was so funny yeah so that's a place to go if you're ever in savannah Georgia. yeah saddlebags is really fun yeah and we also did a ghost tour the other week which we didn't see any ghosts but we (laughs) see the history of the town which is crazy this town is pretty much where well it's known for like slavery back in the I don't even I don't even want to say the day because I'll probably get it wrong yeah but they had they told a story about like the first woman that was hung in Georgia I think or in Savannah the town like in the square and like we went to old houses and it was like a bit of a history lesson, not ghosts. Yeah, we didn't even get feeling like we weren't get goosebumps or, you know. Yeah, usually 
I can tell if there's a ghost somewhere or if I get an off feeling about a place. Yeah. And I didn't get that, but it was still okay and still fun. But the thing is that we've been spoiled. I mean, at least I have with a few really good uh, ghost experiences back in Australia. Can you tell us? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. Story time. I've been to so many, especially um, like all over like in Adelaide um, and even in like New South Wales mm-hmm. and like prisons. We went to Fremantle Prison and WA, like lots of prisons, which you definitely get really like like weird, weird feelings vibes. there. And But there was one place we went. It was like a little cottage like farm estate thing mm-hmm. that is obviously now blocked off to the public. And We're it's about- I can't remember exactly. I think it was in Perth. Yeah. And it was just out a little bit from Perth. And obviously people, I think they still held like a bit, like a few events there. They had like, it was like a little town almost. Like it had a cottage. It had like an entertainment center place. Yeah. And it was really spooky. We would sit down and they gave us all, you know, like the instruments. And these guys are actual like ghost hunters. Yeah. Like they do that for a living. So they're not actors. <laughs> they're not actors. They actually do this for a living and they take it very seriously. Like they get all the sound and like pick up the frequencies and all that type of mm-hmm. stuff. And we were like sit in a room with all the lights off mm-hmm. and we just have like all the monitors around and all the sound shit. And yeah, you felt things like touch you and you could just feel like one leg get really cold um, you could pick up words over the thing and they, you know, it would like say shit, like depending on what the spirit was like, but they'd say like, get out and like, or just like talk over the thing. Some of them were really nice, but others, wow. you just felt it. And you, and when you feel it, like there's no denying that shit. Yeah. Like it was like one leg went cold and then you'd feel like something touch That's you. Weird. So there was also another place we went to that was like a uh, old hospital. And it was, we were in like a theatre as well. It was really weird. Mm -hmm. And they had like children. It was also an orphanage. So there was children, like ghosts. And I don't know if it was like, it was one of those things where it's like, I don't know if they were just fucking pulling our leg or anything, but we all had to put our fingers like on this table. And what they'd say is that the kids like to go under there and they like to run up and down with the table like up and down the thing so we would all like just the people like none of the staff or anything like that it was just us we would just lightly press our fingers like on the table and it fucking started to lift like no joke I don't know if it was like a magic trick or if they were pulling our legs or something like this but this was the same thing like they do this for a living like this is like what happens and no one was like lifting it like you had your fingers on top of the tabletop and like just lightly just enough to give your energy and then we were literally walking around with this table and it was like floating over the air. Like not like fucking up here, like off the ground, like maybe like that much where it's like believable enough to be like, holy fuck. Were you freaking out? A little bit at that point. And I even then we all sat around in a circle and then they told, because we knew the people that were doing the like tour, we've met them before. And they told them that, they told the ghosts that we were in the circus and yeah. so they made me do handstands for the kids. So <laughs> <laughs> Always on show. So I had to do handstands. And then as soon as I did this fucking handstand, all of the fucking lights and the toys and everything started like going off, buzzing and like lighting up. It was really weird. That's so crazy. It's just like shit like that. Like some people like are like, oh, that's bullshit. But then when you're in it and you're actually doing it, it's like no, like that's fucking real. Were you like, like no one's scared here. or not really? Kind of because obviously there are like good. They say there's good ghosts and bad ghosts, and they yeah. said that there was like a woman where we were that wasn't very good. Like back in the day, like she was quite an evil person, and she liked to hang around the doorway there. And so yeah, I was scared of that part. But wow. But anyway, we've had some really good ghost tours and like ghost experiences and paranormal experiences so the savannah one didn't really live up to that expectation no and it was very similar to one that we went to at the gold on the coast. gold coast we went Surfers on a go- paradise <laughs> went on a ghost tour in the gold coast and who does me, that let me tell you that is all for money because 
we went, and first of all, the lady was dressed in like a witch outfit. <laughs> she was had a witch's hat on and a cloak. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, um, this could be good. Anyways, it she was an actor for sure. She and she us, told us she was an actor. <laughs> she took us down the alleyways of Surfer's Paradise and was like, yeah, if you look into these abandoned shops, you can see some orbs and some spirits. And we were just like, <laughs> yeah, we were like crazy. And then she took us right next to the strip club and she was like, back in the day, strippers were killed here. And just took us down. And she was like, there's ghosts of the strippers. And we were like, what? <laughs> And then she took us to the beach and she was saying oh. stories about how you'll see like ghosts playing on the beach. And then she started to pull out a phone and show us that she was the first lady in Australia to wear a bikini. <laughs> that was just like the tour that made me not want to go on any more yeah. ghost tours because I was just like, I do not want to experience this ever again. Yes. And then Savannah, I was like, I bet it's the same as that. I knew and it was going to be the same. Kind of nearly was, but I think it was it was interesting because we got to see the history and I'm sure it – well, it still was spooky because the houses here are so old. old yeah. And just driving down, like, the main street, like, at night even, it's – like All you the can, Spanish moss hanging off the trees and when you're in the ghetto, it's even creepier. Really scary. <laughs> Every Uber driver that has picked me up or dropped me home, they say, why are you even outside your house? Like, in it's so area. scary. But I don't – I vibe it. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. It's not as bad as what I thought it would be. But I do miss Florida, Fort Lauderdale, which we have a trip planned there. Yes, we're going – so next week – the fuck. Next week yeah. we're going to, to Orlando. Orlando. Which we, is Florida. Yes. We're gonna go and stay for a few nights and we're gonna go to Disneyland and Universal Studios. And I'm so excited. Yeah, we're really excited. And then we're doing that, which will be great. And the house we're staying in the Airbnb, it's like Disney themed. Yeah, it's a full decked out Disney theme. It's got a pool and a spa. And it just looks really fun. We can't wait. Yeah, so we're doing that. And then we are going to road trip to see our friend Kian across the other side of America. So, so yeah, we're driving from here, um, just Savannah, all the way across to Portland. So it'll take us a which few is days. Near the Can- yeah, Canadian, like Can- Vancouver. Canada. It's Vancouver, Washington. Oh. I'm going to delete that part. <laughs> what? It's Vancouver, Washington. Oh, but there's a Vancouver in Canada. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we're driving from Do- Savannah, Georgia to Vancouver. Vancouver, but not the Canadian Vancouver. No, we're going to the Portland. Washington, Portland one. Yeah. Which is pretty much the other side of the country. It's going to take us a few days, maybe four days. We're going to stop in Nashville, Kansas City, Salt Lake City. Um. Utah? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that. And we're going to go see him and his family, meet his family. Well, I'll meet his family. You yeah. have met his family. And that's going to be so exciting. We're going to be there for my, Kyle's birthday. Yeah. And we're going to stay there for a few days. Yeah, but we have nothing really planned. And then, announcement, I'm going to Europe for like, six weeks with my three best friends from high school so we are really excited we're doing london paris amsterdam dubrovnik sail croatia italy and then waking up on the greek islands for my birthday so she's doing the whole shebang yes i'm gonna come back a different person i might even speak you know a bit like of italian french Greek. Or her liver is going to be completely ruined. Yeah, and I'm going to come <laughs> She's back. She's going to look worse than what she <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in a really bad funk you're when gonna I get You're going to be back. 10 years older. Like, you're going to look <laughs> 10 years older. I'm going to need to get Botox when I get back because, yeah, I'm not going to be able to keep up with the Europeans, the way they drink and eat pasta. I'm going to come back the size of a house as well, so... <laughs> Gonna live it up. Gonna live it up. 
make sure I get to the gym when I get back or maybe when I'm there, get my steps up. And I love red wines, so I may be drinking a bottle of red a day for six weeks. Chihu, baby. Chihu and I really talk a lot. So (laughs) the podcast is hard because when we come to talk on the podcast, just us two, we have nothing left to talk about because we talk every single day. 24-7. 24-7. Yeah, all the stuff that we could talk about on the podcast, we definitely shouldn't. And it's a little bit too much. Too much for the podcast. We're just trying to live more carefree, more, I want to say, at least for myself, I'm trying to live more vulnerable. I'm trying to be more open and honest and talk. I mean, I talk a lot anyway, and I'm trying to just be happy and what's the word like I'm just trying to live carefree I've always said I wanted to live carefree and I like last year was great I started to really live that and I was so good and then this year I kind of took a step back and I've been very stressed and anxious and yeah I think that's where our funk started to happen because we got to America and we love it and like the first well, for Dante, she hated it when she first got here, but I wasn't here then, so she was like, well, you're sad without me. Then I got here, and <laughs> and we had so much fun, right? Yeah, we did. I said that, like, convincing myself. Right? <laughs> no, we had so much fun, but then I think it kind of, after we had all that fun, we were like, crap, we're in America, and then, like, had to start, like, uh-huh thinking more about I don't know I don't know what it was but I literally from the moment I got here hated it like I don't know what it is I had a lot of anxiety and probably the jet lag didn't help but I have felt out of place ever since I arrived here and I miss home so much so I don't know I feel like that has just contributed to my funk and to my like just haven't been really feeling like myself but I'm starting to get back there and I'm starting yeah. to just try and live more carefree yeah and open my heart well actually what was your intention last night at the oh at the my meditation? intention last night was have more gratitude for my life and again be more happy and positive what was yours Mine was to open, I will leave this class um, with an open heart and I wanted to love more openly and freely without judgment on myself and without hesitation. That is really good and beautiful and (laughs) in-depth. Yeah, I really, whenever I get in the class, I like lay down my eyes closed and I just try to freak out and then I just say the most like basic like, I have more gratitude for my life. You know, like, that's still good intention. That is good. You can always have gratitude. Yeah. But, yeah, I would say, sorry, what? What? No, I was just going to talk about how I make the <laughs> the full moon um reports oh, for yeah. you guys. Yeah, Dante really, especially when I was in my funk, and she was in her funk as well, tried to really make us better by writing like a full moon ritual I like learning about astrology and the moon so a way to help me learn is I've been writing up like ever since the end of last year I would just send a text message if there was a new moon or a full moon coming up I would learn about it research it and then I'd write up like a full like report text message and send it to M this was even while you were still at home yeah it was really good and I'd send one to my partner as well and write one up for myself. And then this last full moon, I wrote up like a full template PowerPoint <laughs> document. It was a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> With like all the key information and then a personalized report for M, Kyle, and then someone else on the show as well, yeah. which is good because it helps me learn about everything astrology. And, um, and other people as well. And yeah gives me like a deep dive on other people and what they're going through yeah. friendships and how much I've learned from my friendship with you about how so? <laughs> how so about being able to pull 
each other up on bullshit and pull each other up on when you're in the wrong Mm -hmm. and talking about like openly about hey like no that was wrong and you need to fix that yeah and without getting defensive about it yeah like that's when you know you have a good friend yeah whenever they can do that to you because there is like a few friends in my life and I thought that I was like so close to them and then I can't pull them up on their bullshit yeah it's hard when you want to try and better the other person and you're trying to show them or hey maybe that's not the right way to do something or without like coming across judgmental and actually genuinely trying to help and that's what I've learned with you is that we can literally say anything to each other yeah and learn from it and just be okay with it yeah and be like okay like yeah I see what you're saying like I tell you yeah. but you definitely <laughs> you're very an impulsive person and just yeah. say exactly how you feel uh, which is fine yeah which is fine but sometimes it can get me in trouble maybe no not get me in trouble <laughs> just yeah I don't, know. I don't know how to explain you yeah I am so complicated I think M is slightly like a people pleaser and so she's constantly trying to be kind but she's over kind like you can kind of tell that she's trying to be nice but she you genuinely, genuinely mean you it. genuinely mean well but you're you can just tell that you're trying really hard to be kind especially to people who are not necessarily like happy with you or like don't really want to like just like I don't need to be that nice yeah you just don't need that right like you just don't need to be like that but you also need to start saying no more and I think yes I'm a yes man she's a yes man which is fine in some cases but as soon as you you are a yes man as soon as you start saying no, people then take that as you're a horrible person yes. or you're rude or you're... And even Adam pulled me up on it. Not pulled me up, but he, like, talked to me. He was like, you're so nice that you just say yes and you do everything for anyone, I guess. And then as soon as you, like, put your foot down and say, like, no, oh, no it might like, even be something, like, so oh, tiny. No, like, like, no, hey, I don't want to drive people around and drop them off or yeah um I'm I don't really want to take you like like I drop everything I'm doing to do something for you like which is fine like you should do that for people but not all the time yeah which I would say I do that all the time and then people literally like what are you kidding like like they get really uh, offended by it because all they all you've said to them is yes yeah so they see that okay, well, now you're a shitty person, which is not the case at all. Yes, which I have definitely had that a lot this year because I've told myself I'm going to start saying no to, like, things Things that don't want to actually do. Yeah, if it's not aligning with my day in my life, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that for you. But then – and then talking to, like, some of my other friends, like one of my friends, she has – ever since the beginning of me knowing her, she's always been, like – no if she doesn't want to do something like me and her might organize say like coffee and then 10 minutes before no like say like two hours before she'd be like oh I don't feel like going anymore I would never get angry at her I wouldn't even like care Mm -hmm. and because she said that from the beginning yeah so yeah it's about setting that yeah like she said yeah she set like that boundary literally since the day I met her for everybody like Everyone would be like, oh, is she coming? And she'd be like, no, I don't want you. And no one will question. Or she might be like, no, I don't want to do that for you anymore. And no one questions it because she's always had that boundary set. I think, like, selfishness is always looked at as, like, a negative thing. And I don't think it's negative at all to be somewhat selfish if it's benefiting you. Like, (laughs) that doesn't make sense because selfishness is about you. I think selfishness is, like, good because it's about, like, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. Like, you cannot allow people to force you into doing things that you, yeah, you don't want. Like, it's okay to say no to things. Yeah. And it's okay to be like, "Mm, I'm not really feeling like it anymore. Yeah. Which that's fine. Yeah. But I also think... In a normal, we're talking from like being on the show and always around people twenty four seven. Like, I think it would be a lot different 
if we lived in a town and we had our own houses and you know your friend you might be like hey want to come in for dinner and they'll be like no sorry I've had a big week but here you know what everyone's doing you know their life you know exactly what they're doing so that's where it's kind of different I think for me yeah and I think for me this year especially I've found you know I've lived in the, the circus my entire life but this year especially I found it quite difficult to separate work and just the rest of my life yeah work has been integrated into every little thing because it's stressful we're here in America it's completely different lifestyle and territory and work and like the circus all we talk about is like work and you don't get any separation and it's really hard to to live a stress-free and carefree life if all you're talking about is work and living in your work like it's hard yeah which there's like literally every day last week we'd even if it was like a day off at the pub for dinner we'd all be talking about it and then I think a few days ago we were having drinks and we literally said whoever talks about work has to scull their drink because we're over talking about it and within two minutes we stopped talking about it but then we started again yeah it's hard because the circus is such like a lifestyle and you often get so wrapped up in it that you forget what your other hobbies are and what other interests you have and it, it really like overwhelms your life sometimes yeah which I didn't notice the past three years. No, and I have You probably either. didn't. But this year has been, like, so bad. The past – I think that's why we were in that weird rut because literally it's just in our face and all everyone talks about is work and there's actually no escaping. And I've found – I've, like, really struggled, which I think was a part of my rut, was that I couldn't, like, go hang out with friends. Like, when I hang out with my friends, I don't talk about work. I don't really talk about my career. Like, I just – hang out with my friends and it's so nice but that's where I like struggled coming to America because I can't hang out with other people really yeah except if I meet people but even then the whole time they're like oh my god tell me about your job and I'm like I can't and like we've had to pull each other up a few times like we literally if I find myself talking about work I'm like stop like when let's stop talking about work and like it's just so hard sometimes because it is your life yeah it is so much a part of your life this job Mm. so it is hard and it's something that I'm working on to try and not you know talk about so much because there are other things to talk about yeah and and I'd say it's harder for Dante because obviously her uncle owns a business but like her mum has only ever worked in circus so her mum like when she talks to her mum they talk about work a lot which is fine, but then when I talk to my mum, I can talk to her not about work. Actually, she does talk to me about my work because she mm. wants to know about it, but, I mean, I it can. It just feels, like, very overwhelming. Um, yeah, but I think just the position felt... we're in being in another country. Yeah, it's not been – it's been harder, and it's actually been harder not having everyone live on location. Like yeah. living on the lot, it almost feels like everyone is a little bit disconnected in a way because everyone's living in like different housing, um, yeah. like in groups. And so those groups are always like they're going to be hanging out together. Like whoever's living in those houses is going to yeah. hang out together. Or I just feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect. Like not everyone is as close as we've been the past few mm-hmm. years. We don't do as many things together, even though we still hang out together a lot. It just, yeah. it's a very different situation being over here. The dynamics have definitely changed, which is really weird because I thought we would have made more of an effort as a whole to do, like, bigger group outings yeah, like we did in Australia, yeah. whereas we haven't really. No. And no one's really that keen. That keen. To all. Maybe everyone's just sick of each other. <laughs> Maybe... Yeah, I think maybe not living together. Everyone's like, good, keep it like that. Yeah. No, I think I actually think everyone's struggling. Yeah. And it's just about pulling back from those thoughts whenever you start to, like, talk about it and you start to, like – I've am been overthinking a lot the past few weeks. 
about yeah. everything, like every little thing. And then that I get caught up in that thought. That thought becomes like an anxious feeling. And then that anxious feeling just sits in my tummy and I have to just pull back yeah. and like take a deep breath and just be like, it doesn't matter. Yes. Like, and that actually came into my reading. I never overthink. And lately I've been overthinking like crazy stuff and things. I'm like what like my friendships with everyone it's like why I've never been like that in my life and in my reading I got back today she literally said there's like a shyness and overthinking niggling at you every single day and you're just overthinking everything and she's like you need to remember that you're like a really confident person and that you these issues are insecurities that you've never had before and it was like spot on. I should actually read it. But it was like crazy that she picked that up through my reading. Yeah. Because if she had said that any other time, I would have said, no way. Yeah. But yeah, it was like hectic. And that's also why we're in a rut. Just overthinking tiny things. Yeah, tiny little things and then getting caught up in that thought and not being able to shake the feeling that that thought brought on. Yeah. And just sitting in it and wallowing in it and getting sad about it <laughs> and literally and just yeah. not taking it and just like getting it out of your head and letting it move on yeah like which I have been overthinking I have a lot of like big life things I would say coming up mm. well so does everyone but like I'm going to London right and I have no accommodation and I have no plans like honestly no money and I'm just going and not even overthinking it. I don't even care. That's like Good. not even stressful to me. But then I'm overthinking tiny things like a conversation I had with one of my friends. You yeah. know what I mean? Something stupid like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, I need to swap and maybe <laughs> become, start overthinking my trip to Europe. Or no, don't overthink decisions. anything. Yeah. That's like, why I'm impulsive. <laughs> yeah. She's the impulsive one. And I'm the emotional one. Yeah, and I'm not emotional at all. Like, sometimes I can be, but not really. Especially, fun fact, since I went off the pill about a year ago, hardly cry. Not emotional at all. Which is crazy. It's a very scientific fact for you guys. Thanks for listening. Make sure that you guys follow us on Spotify by pressing the little bell so that you get notifications. And follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Infamous Exposed to stay up to date about everything we do in our lives.